So many questions. I love this. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Hey there, hi there, ho there. Andrew here with the third video now on some questions that people have asked me online and in person about being a scare actor for Halloween Horror Nights. If you haven't seen the previous Q&As, go ahead and click the link above. And if you have a question yourself that you'd like to have answered that you haven't seen in a previous video, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And let's get into the questions. Question, how much weight did you lose last Halloween Horror Nights? And is that a normal thing with the other scare actors? Well, last year I lost lost 20 pounds in the month of October and during my time at Run, Blood, Sweat and Fears and it was exhausting work but completely worth it and yes many other scare actors lose weight during their time at Halloween Horror Nights. So far I've lost 18 pounds as the time of this recording and I'm sure I will lose a little bit more by the end of the run. Question, what is the best and worst part of being a scare actor? That is really tough to say because there are so many great things about being a scare actor. I mean, first off, it is a great outlet to get out there and act like a crazy person and not have to go to jail. The worst part, I guess you could say, for being a scare actor is the demand of the job. It is basically a physically demanding and a mentally demanding and an emotionally demanding job. And what I mean by that is that you have to keep yourself in good shape because you can get hurt if you don't. Question, does it pay a lot? Short answer, no. Long answer, no. No one will ever retire from the cash flow of being a scare actor. After all, they are theme park employees. Question, what is the best scare experiences you've provided for a guest? Well, that could really be a long answer, so I will try and keep it short because that could be a whole series in itself of just me telling stories of how I scared people. I can say that I've scared celebrities that have come through the house. Hello, Walking Dead cast. And that's always fun. Of course, you treat them like anybody else. I mean, could you see Leatherface jumping out of a boo hole and asking somebody to stop for an autograph or a selfie? No. I have scared men bigger than me, which is always a fun thing. I know that I scared a guy who was probably standing around six foot nine and he dropped flat down on the ground, face down, spread eagle like he was being arrested. And the funny thing for me was all of his friends just ran right over him to get away from me. I have scared groups of people as well, and they have all fallen back like I was doing some type of Star Wars force push on them. Those are always really great too. I actually really do enjoy the group scares, I think, more than anything else because there's a bunch of friends and family, and they're going to share that scare with each other, pointing out who was scared, who wasn't, and it's just a lot of fun, and I get to be part of that memory. Question, why do you insist on trying to get your wife to go to Halloween Horror Nights when you know she's a weenie? Okay, my wife wrote that question in, and the answer is, I want my wife to see the great things that go on in my place of employment. For the record, I did get my wife to go to Halloween Horror Nights number 20, which we were dating at the time. She spent two nights there with me. I had a frequent fear pack and I had gotten her one, so she wanted at least me to get my money's worth back. The second night, she didn't go in any houses. I think she just basically decided to drink for most of the night. I don't know if that was because of the event or if it was because she was dating me at the time. Question, how do you choose your victims? Well, what I notice about people is their facial appearance and the body language, and I, like most characters, can see someone the moment that they're coming into the scaring distance, which is just a few seconds making that decision and saying, yes, I'm going to go and scare them, or no, I'm going to let them pass. And the position of where they are in distance to me is always a big factor as well. Question, what type of people do you scare more often and tend not to? Well, I don't have a certain type of person that I target only for that person. I am an equal opportunity scare actor after all. I think it's because of my size. I can get away with scaring a lot of people just because I'm a big guy. However, I do know some smaller female scare actors that love to target the big boys. Now, who do I not go for? Well, I don't go for anyone that has the ugly cries going on because they've already been scared so badly and they're having a tough time just getting through the house. So I give them a pass and usually when that happens in a house, a ops or a coordinator or a manager is there to rescue them anyways and walk them through the rest of the house to get them out without having any more scares put upon them. I also do not go after small children unless they are wearing horror stuff and seem to be enjoying themselves. And yes, I have scared 
many small children. Okay, let's wrap it up on this video here. If you like the video and you're looking for more, go ahead and let's tap that like button. Let's try to get to 50 likes plus share with all your friends in all forms of social media. If you got a question and you haven't seen it yet in a video, put it down in the comment box below. Don't forget to subscribe so you get notified the moment I upload. And I will see you in the next video.